He's gotten you to this point. And I know sometimes things may leave, look bleak. Sometimes things, you might, not, you might not see the light at the end of the tunnel. All you see is struggle. All you see is despair and conflict. But I'm here to tell you that God has an expected end for your life. God is not caught off by guard. He's not caught off guard. God, God, God is never surprised by anything. He knew every mistake that we would make. He knew every failure, every disappointment, every letdown. God knew it. But yet he said, I know my plans and my thoughts for thee. He said, they're not, they're not calamity, difficult. No, no, it's peace. It's not death, it's not famine, it's not pestilence, it's not hunger, it's not sickness. No, no evil. He says, what I got for you or my thoughts towards you is an expected end. Wow. That's powerful. And today, uh, I, I tell you that, that as I'm sitting there and I'm worshiping, you know, and uh, I love to get caught up in the presence of God. There's something about worship. I've, I've told you this before, and, and I'll repeat it. You know, people like to classify who's a preacher, who's a prophet, who's an evangelist, and there's nothing wrong with that. You are what God calls you. You are. But what I like to be classified as is a worshiper. Because I know everything that God has done for me. I know from where he's delivered me. And I know where he's taken me. And that's the beauty of it. Why? Because I don't deserve it. Huh? I don't deserve it. On the contrary, what I deserve, he didn't give me. And when somebody does that for you, even in life, even when it doesn't, doesn't even when it's not with God, in, in natural life, when, when you know that you, you deserve a, a, a worse, but somebody gives you better, you tend to, 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 to really connect with that person. I don't deserve this job, or I don't deserve this relationship, I don't deserve this wife. And, and, and why you choose me, why you pick me, that tends to melt your heart. Imagine with God. Because God is pure, God is holy. And at the end of the day, none of us sitting here deserves anything but death. But he chose to give us life and life in abundance. Abundant life. Wow. Powerful. As I sat here today and, I, and I'm listening to my niece worship, man, it, it, it touched me like it's never touched me before. Really, really, it's, it's, never, it's never touched me like that. It's like today I was able to see her expected end from God. Like that's why, that's why she was created. That's your purpose. God created everybody here with a purpose. That's her purpose, to worship God. See, one day God created Lucifer up there in heaven and made them the most beautifulest angel. He was the seal of perfection. God, God put, he was the pastor and the music director. God instilled pipes in him so that when he would open his mouth, all you would hear would be the glory of God, right? It's the same thing with my niece. We all have a creative purpose. It's to us to seek it out. Huh? God says, I got it. You're, you're ending. I got it. It's there. Do you want it? Huh? Stand with me this morning. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. And we're still dealing with the six keys uh, of the six biblical principles uh, to destiny fulfillment. And we didn't get to finish point one, and, and, and we'll finish it and Maybe touch a little bit of point two, but we're definitely going to finish point one. And the, our main scripture for point one was the power of vision. The power of vision. And we got that out of uh, uh, Proverbs 29, 18. And we'll go back to it in a few minutes. But the Lord was sharing this scripture with me this morning, and I want to share it with you. And, and soon after we finish the six, six points, we'll be dealing with your calling. Yes, we'll be dealing with your calling. 
I don't care if you're, you're, you're an infant, <laughs> and I don't care if you're, how old are you, 93? 92, okay. Huh? That's like when you ask a 12 year old, what are you, 11? No, I'm 12. <laughs> I asked her, she's 93. No, I'm 92. I'm going to get that. Huh? I'm going to huh? like that. She's coming in this morning with, with Minister Randy and his wife, and, and, and I tell her, hello, beautiful. And she goes, she takes like 10 minutes to go. Now, you ain't talking to me. I said, no, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Praise God. But, but God has a calling over your life, and that's what we're going to next. Amen? But the word of God is red, honey. Give me a, a tissue real quick. Oh, yeah? Okay. The word of God is red in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I'm going to read that again. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to an expected end. Thank you, Lord. Holy, uh, most gracious, high Father, we thank you this morning. We praise you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory, for you are worthy of it, O Lord. I know that each of us, Almighty God, have not been called, O oh Lord, to anything other but to your kingdom. To the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ. And I know that our purpose, O oh Lord, is to bring all the glory, to give you all the glory. And we promise to do that, my God. And it's also, Almighty Lord, for, for us to, to work on the maximum expansion of the kingdom of God. So, Lord, prepare our hearts today, our minds, to receive your word, oh, Lord. We know that uh, we, we want a word not from man but from you, straight from the throne room of God. A word that will encourage us, inspire us, will influence, oh, Lord, to go out and to seek thy glory and the maximum expansion of your kingdom. And we ask you all these things in the name of your beloved son, Jesus. Amen. God is good. You may be seated. Amen. As I said, this scripture uh, that we're sharing here this morning is a powerful scripture. And, and the reason, uh, uh, it's the word of God. <laughs> but here the Lord speaks about the people of Israel were in captivity in a foreign land a pagan land. But they were there because of their sins. Their sins took them there. And God was asking them through the prophet, that's the importance of the prophets and prophecy. He was speaking to them and telling them that I want you to submit. I want you to submit to captivity. And this really didn't sit well with the people. <laughs> and God said, but he, he gave him a promise. He said, but if you do, if you submit, he says, I'm going to bless you right where you're at. Your circumstance, your situation will not dictate God's blessing for your life. What God has for you, what God has for me, there is no circumstance, no situation that can stop it. Even when it's our sin. Ooh. Because it was their sin that took them into captivity, yet the Lord said, listen good, I will bless you where you're at. I will give you homes you didn't even build. I'll give you vineyards you didn't even plant if you submit to my will. And of course, the people didn't like that. Why? Because they're in a pagan land. Tough situation. Difficult situation, but God says, hey, look, when I'm going to bless you, there's nothing that can stop that blessing, not even, ooh, captivity. And I can speak for myself because my, my, my sins took me, it took me captive. 
And these very same words God spoke over in my life every time I opened the word of God and I, and, I, and I came into contact with this scripture. God is telling me, submit. And when you do, I will bless you right where you're at. He said, because I don't have thoughts, any other thoughts but peace for you. I have your best interest at heart. I don't desire any evil for you. God says, I have an expected end for your life. What does that mean? A predetermined, preordained, specific, even customized. You know what customized means? That the ending that God has for your life is not for nobody else's life. I could talk about a customized, a, a customized a calling for your life. What does that mean? That there's something specific that God wants you to do that nobody else can do but you. Did you know that? Well, the ending that God is speaking about is your ending. It's customized. It's predetermined. It's preordained. It's specific. And it's set just for you. If only you will submit to the thoughts that God has towards you as well as his plan. And that's the most difficult thing. You know why? Because we know best. At least we think we know best. But I want to continue in point one because that's what it's about. It's about the expected end. We spoke about vision from Proverbs 29, 18 and what vision meant. Vision is just a prophetic, listen good, it's a prophetic picture of where you are going. Not of where you're at, but where you're going, where God is taking you. So here again, God is giving you that very same word in Jeremiah 29, 11. God is saying, there's somewhere I want to take you. It's specific. It's predetermined. It's preordained. It's something that I specifically customize for you. It's your ending. And I want you to be able to see it. <clears throat> we spoke about John 3, 3. You don't have to put that verse there, though. But we spoke about John 3, 3. He said, when you're born again. He said, you should be able to see, not before, but only once you're born again of spirit and of the water, he said, you shall see the kingdom of God. Jesus said that. Paul was able to see a crown that had already been reserved for him. Paul said that, that, that there was one thing and one thing only that he did, and in, in Philippians 3.13, he said, I forget that which is behind me. Why? He said, because I'm pressing towards the mark. He was able to see the mark that God has set for him, the goal that God has set for him, and he says, what that does is it keeps me focused. I stay off the nonsense. I stay away from the gossip. I stay away from the disappointment. I don't focus on the persecution. I don't focus on the lies. I don't focus on the financial problems because I know that whatever I go through here on earth can, cannot compare to the glory that God has for me. Praise the name of the living God. Vision. The power of vision. We need that. We need you to be able to see the expected. God said, I got an expected ending for you. Well, God, I want to see that. I want to see that, that, that preordained, that predetermined, that specific and customized ending that you have for me. I want to be able to see it because once you can see it, your life immediately changes and so does mine. Our life changes. We know that we went to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. You don't have to put that neither because they got that last week. And, and, and he asked, and, and, and here Jeremiah, because God was calling him. Once again, God was calling him, and, and, and God was showing him that I have a predetermined, a, a, a specific, a customized calling for your life. He's saying, Jeremiah, nobody else can do this but you. And before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, and it was there that I sanctified you to call you as a prophet to the nations. So he said, what do you see in the vision? He said, what he saw, an almond tree, right? He said he saw it. And God said, well, you've seen it correctly. So it's important not just to have a vision, but to be able to see it correctly, to be able to see it clearly. 
And then God told him, since you've seen it correctly, that's what I have for you. God says, what, what I will do is I will hasten to perform my word. Don't worry about strength. Don't worry about knowledge. Don't worry about seminars. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I'm telling you now, God says, hey, look, you're going to take you before great men. I'm going to take you before councils. I'm going to take you before Caesars. I'm going to take you before kings. He says that in that hour, my Holy Ghost will give you the words you need to speak. Huh? Vision. Being able to see clearly. As I told you last week, I'm going to tell you again. It's important for you to take notes, to write this down. Sometimes, not just the points, because sometimes you'll, 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 you'll hear something, and, and it's like a different sound. Trust me. Is, is it something that sticks out and you know it's for you? That's the remember word, the spirit word. God wants you to write that down. God's big on writing down. He got angels, the Bible says, and they, all they do is write down. As a matter of fact, in the end days, the Bible says, that the books shall be open. Not just the book, the books shall be open of everything that was written down on it. Write it down. He told Zechariah, he told Ezekiel, you see the vision? Write it down. Huh? Take this word that God has for you and hide it in your heart. But David said that that word is the word that when you hide it in your heart, it's what keeps us, it what helps us, it what assists us to not sin against God. To stay the course. Vision is important. The power of vision. And I can promise you something. That if you keep these truths, I can guarantee you something. Literally, I can guarantee you something that if you walk in keeping these truths, I can guarantee you that if you pay close attention to these principles and keeping them and obeying them and following them, listen, this is the word of God. God will not fail you. Up to this point, the struggles, the conflicts, the waking up every day, not knowing what's in store for you, not understanding what your purpose and your meaning is like, I declare to you through the word of God that all that will change. Because like I said, you were created with a purpose. So was I. I wasn't sitting up in heaven one day, and I think I was discussing this with somebody this week. Let's just have some fun, and let's just create something. Let's just make something. Uh, no. Uh, uh, Genesis 1.14 says that, 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 God, that God made the great lights. He separated the light from the darkness. He made the, 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 the sun to rule in the day, and then he made the moon and the stars to rule in the night, to govern. What does that mean? A created purpose. He didn't just say, no, 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 no let's, let's have some fun here, and let's create man, and let's have some more fun, and let's make them in our likeness and our image. No. He created one of purpose. Behind the creation, he says, you know what you're going to do? You're going to till the ground. You're going to name all the animals. How is that relevant to us today? You were created with a purpose. I was created with a purpose. And listen, the power of vision will show you that purpose. It will show you that God created something specific for you and I to do. Something for us to carry out. So when we wake up in the morning, our life has purpose. Our life has meaning. Instead of the same old, same old. Huh? How many of us experience that? That we wake up in the morning, we have that feeling of the same old, same old. I wake up in the same old room. I go to the same bathroom. Same old bathroom. Same old toothpaste. Huh? The same old coffee, the same old breakfast, the same old cook. <laughs> I get in the same old car. I travel the same old way. I go to the same old job. I got the same old boss for 30 years. Some people are 80 or 90, and look, with all due respect, but all they know how to talk about was the years when they were working or the years whatever they were doing. Some people are 30, and all they're looking for is for retirement. People of God, you were created for a purpose. 
And only the power of vision will destroy that. Huh? For God created you for a purpose in his likeness and his image. That's to reflect the nature and the character of God. We got to remember that. We got to seek that. I don't care how old you are. Uh Uh-uh. You still have a purpose in life. Now, when I go to Esther, and I know I gave you a whole slew of scriptures, and we're going, ain't none of them here, but praise God, right? When you go to Esther chapter 4, I want, I want to show you the danger, the power of vision. What vision will show you, right? Vision will show you your created purpose and that you have a purpose. It will give your life meaning. You'll be able to see your expected end. You'll see it clearly. You'll see the kingdom of God. You'll see eternal life. You'll see the streets of gold. You'll see you ruling with a, 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 a rod of iron and governing for the glory of God. You'll see eternity. You'll be able to see that with vision. The word of God will come alive. It's not a storybook, man. Believe me, it's not. It's not a book of history and historical facts and just stories you read that make you feel good when you're sad and when you're down. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That it is the living word of God. Hebrews 4.12. So it's powerful and it's quick. It'll come alive. And you'll see that all that God has in store for you, and that's what you'll lock in on. See, Esther... She couldn't see the vision. We know that Esther was beautiful, probably the most beautiful woman on earth. She was so beautiful that the king, the pagan king, fell in love with her and and, and made her queen. All Esther could think about was her beauty and how to keep up her beauty so that she can keep up her throne and being queen. All she thought about was the cars and the fancy chariots and her clothes. That's all she thought about until trouble hit. Huh? Huh? Because when you live life, you were created for a purpose. But when you're living outside that created purpose, God allows things to happen in your life to open your eyes and realize that God is calling you. And there's nothing going to stop the calling of God upon your life. You will be miserable until you answer the call of God. You will be. Because God loves you. That's true love. That's why the Bible says he's our father that's in heaven. Because he wants you to realize that just like your parents stay on your back and they love you and they're evil. <laughs> yeah. What he said. He said, you being evil not a good, 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 give good, good chif- uh, gifts to your children, huh? How much more your heavenly father? So just like your parents will stay on your back. And they won't stop until you do things right when they love you. Huh? If they don't love you, that's a different story. But God says that he's up in heaven. He's your father. He's watching over you. He's looking out for you. And that he's a good father. And that he's a perfect father. Huh? Ooh. He said, I ain't going to stop until you line your life up with my will. Be it your will, Lord. Jesus came down to teach us how to be a son. Did you know that? God came down and, 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 and took on flesh just to teach you how to be a son. Huh? They had got it all wrong. They didn't know how to be children. They were called the children of Israel, but they didn't know how to be children to the Father. They were disobedient, stiff-necked. If the shoe fits, wear it, but if if it don't apply, let it fly. But he was teaching us how to be children. He said, I only do what I see my father do. I only speak what I hear my father speak. Huh? That's teaching you I got a purpose. And my purpose is to do the will of the Father. That's what he's telling you. He said, I was created. The Bible says that the night that he was betrayed, listen to the Bible says, he says that he had realized that the hour for which he came to the world had arrived. That's a purpose. Huh? That's a purpose. He had a vision already. He already knew it. He already saw it. And he stayed within it. Huh? He didn't let nothing stop him. Not even his mother. Uh-huh. His mother tried to go, come on, his brothers and sisters, want to, let's, let's get you out of there. We're, they're going to kill you. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. I have a purpose. 
Peter, no, but don't, don't say that, Jesus. Don't speak like that. You, you can't die. You can't go nowhere. No, 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 no. Devil, you're a liar. I was created for a purpose. He didn't care who it was. And then when he tells Pancio Pilato, the king, who had the authority to give him life or to give him death, he said, that's what you think. But I was created for a purpose. And it's, it's the will of the Father for me to die. I shall die. Huh? That's a purpose. That's all he spoke out of his mouth was purpose. I'm here for a purpose. And until I fulfill it, whoo. So Esther, she got it all messed up, huh? She thought it was about her being queen, being beautiful, you know, and about shopping and window shopping, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to compare it to today, right? Fancy clothes and beautiful jewelry is what it's about, my beauty. Until trouble hit. And they were going to annihilate all the Jews. The whole race of the Jews was going to be wiped out off the face of the map. And, and Mordecai, her cousin, it wasn't her uncle, it was her cousin. Read the scriptures good, you'll see that. I know they've told you for years that that was her uncle, but it ain't, it's her cousin. He comes to her and tells her, he says, hey, look, what are you going to do? There's danger. We're about to parrot, they're about to, they're about to eliminate us all. And she said, well, I'm going to keep being queen. I don't know about y'all. That's your problem. I'm queen now. He told her, no, 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 no. Don't think that you're going to be spared because you're a Jew too. He told her, but look, but look, but look, I want to tell you something. He said, he said, this is your purpose. This is the call. This is the, why, the reason why God created you. For a moment like this, God gave you that beauty to use that beauty to deliver his people to be a savior. He says, have you ever considered that? Have you ever stopped to consider the purpose of God and for why you're here? He says, but if you don't do nothing and you miss your call, God will lift up somebody else. Praise the name of the living God. For people who think that they can sit, we can cross our arms and just hope that the circumstances and the situations of life will lead us to do what God calls us to do. Well, you're wrong. You can miss your call. He said, you'll miss it. And God will just raise somebody else up. Well, that's the word of God. That was confirmed in Judas. When Peter... Still before the 120, before the day of Pentecost, in chapter 1 of the book of, of, of Acts. He quoted the scriptures to him. He quoted the prophecies to him about Jesus, how Jesus, how Judas, how Judas was chosen uh, amongst the 12. He said he was a bishop. He was an apostle. Woo. He said, but now he has been removed by God. And it's our, uh, it's, it's our call to pick somebody out. Judas missed his call. He was in school. He was in discipleship. But he was being prepared, equipped, and trained to then go out. And he missed his call. Vision will help you not miss your call. He couldn't see it. All he could see was Jesus wasn't doing what he had expected him to do. Take over the Roman Empire, sit on the throne, rule we'll with you, we'll have riches, we'll have seen things from his flesh. And that's what happens when you don't have vision. When you don't have vision, you live out, out, out you're living out your own desires, you're living out your own gratification. You're living, man, listen, you're living out your flesh. That's the truth. But when you have vision, you see the things of God. God is always put first. He's always at the top of the list. And whatever it is, because people talk about, oh, but I give God the priority. He's first in my life. And, and nobody's debating that. Because like I said, there's people that are genuine. They love God. They're sincere. Oh, man, they're, they're well-intentioned. But that's not going to get you anywhere. Nah. I'm telling you, you got to have vision. we got to be walking in the will of God. There's something that God has designed for your life, and you can't let it pass by. The power of vision. Go to the next scripture, please. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraints. Listen good. 
but happy is he who keeps the law. So he's saying that when there's vision, when there's a word from God, a word from God about what? Your expected end. The blueprint to your life. He says when you have that, that'll cause you not to cast off restraint. What does cast off restraint mean? I've shared this with you before. When you cast off restraint, you become spiritually and morally bankrupt. That's exactly what happened. Huh? See, when you have that word of God, it's what keeps you in check. When you have that vision from God, it keeps you in check. See, when you have the vision from God, that gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things. This is the part I really want you to listen to. It's very essential. Because when you have an expected end, when God has customized your ending, when there's something that God, okay, that only you can do, sometimes not, that call comes before anything else. Before anything else, that call comes. Because that's the will of God for your life. He created you for that. So he says when you're not walking in that, when you're not fulfilling that, when you're not, when you're not living that, he says what happens is you become spiritually and morally bankrupt. You begin chasing things that are not godly. That's what happens. You find yourself going through, through, through so many avenues of, of things that are not godly, of things that don't bring you closer to God. They steer you away from God. You cast off restraint. What happened with Moses? Moses was the man that the Bible, the Bible the teacher that he represented the law. The people of Israel, the, the Bible teaches you that Satan and, 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 and the archangel Michael were fighting and disputing over his body. The devil wanted to take his body. What do you think he wanted to do with it? He wanted to give it to the people of Israel so that they can do what they did best, make an idol out of it. Because he represented the law. Evidence of that is when, when he went up to get the, the Ten Commandments from God, when Moses was removed from the people, what did they do? Huh? They became spiritually and morally bankrupt. They began to, to take all their gold and all their jewelry to build a calf, a golden calf. And they begin to, when the Bible says, and they got up to play in the original, what that means is sexual immorality. When Moses came down, because Moses represented the law, the word of God, when he came down, what he saw, well, he was flabbergasted. People with no vision. That's the power of vision. That's the power of having God's word for your life. Go to the next verse, brother. Without it, that's, that's why you see a lot of people, in all reality, they're running around, they're trying to do everything. They want to get involved with everything. They want no. That's not how this works. There's something specific that God has you to do. That's what you got to focus on. Vision gives you focus. You stay focused. You're looking at the mark that God set for you. You're looking at the goal that God set for you. You're looking at the kingdom of God that you can see. You're looking at eternity. You're looking at the call of God on your life. Now, this is an important verse that I really want you to, <coughs> to listen. <coughs> this is Romans 4.17. All right? Now, I want to explain this to you as the Lord was sharing it with me, right? Uh, uh, because I was like, Lord, but, but I don't understand this verse the, the way you, you're showing it to me, right? And God said, well, I want to explain it to you, right? This is a verse that you want to speak over people's life and even your own life. When things ain't going according to the will of God, Okay? You could have a son or a daughter that's in drug addiction. You could have a son or a daughter that's just lost, or you could have a, a husband that's lost. Whatever it may be, the Bible teaches you that, the, that, 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 that you can call the things that are not as though they were. That's what vision does. Vision gives you the power because you're seeing the ending. You're seeing the call of God on your life. You're seeing you stand before multitudes and multitudes of people pray, preaching the word of God. You're seeing the sick be healed. It doesn't matter what your marriage looks like now. It doesn't matter what your life looks like now. It doesn't matter that you're in prison. God says you can call those things or not as though they were. Why? Because God is a God that doesn't look at your now. He looks at your tomorrow. Why? Huh? Doesn't work like that. You don't give in. When you have vision, you're able to see that. So you start speaking to things 
as God is showing you. And you start covering people. You start covering things. You cover your future speaking what God is saying he has for you. Simple like that. That's how you use it. And that's the good fight. He said, fight the good fight of faith. That's what it is. Faith is, when, when, when you live by faith, you don't live by sight. You don't live by your, your five senses. No, you live by faith. You believe God. Huh? The Bible says that Abraham and Moses were able to see the days of Jesus. How does that happen? Huh? By the power of vision. They understood the plan of God. Hey, listen, God doesn't do anything before revealing it first to his prophet. Okay? You may not be a prophet, but the Holy Spirit of God lives, dwells, and abides in you. So the gift of prophecy is in you. Did you know that? It has to be. It's the Holy Spirit of God. You don't have to be a prophet, and you'll be going through Walmart, and God will say, I want you to go take a word to that person right there. You're a prophet <laughs> at that moment. That's how it works. Huh? You may not have the gift of healing, and the gift of healing is a person that, that can, it's, it's as if they can turn it on and turn it off. Come here, in the name of Jesus. Come you may not have that, but God may say, I want you to go over there while you're in warm. I want you to lay hands on that person. Or like my mom, she's at a job with, with, with the people that are dying. Lay your hands on them, and God will heal them. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God lives, dwells, and abides in you. Start speaking over your situation. Go to the next verse. As God says. Okay, well, this is point two. This is point two. And point two is the power of life. Okay, point two, the power of life. Because the kingdom of God, this kingdom, the Bible says that Jesus was preaching the message of the kingdom, which is the gospel. For those that don't think that this is about the kingdom, it is. Okay? And this kingdom, the kingdom of God, is about light. And when I'm speaking about light, I'm speaking about knowledge. Wisdom, understanding. Without it, the Bible says, look, my people are destroyed. Listen good. For those of us, you know, that, that, that like to say we're the people of God, no matter what we're doing, it doesn't matter how I'm living right now, I'm the people of God. He says, my people will be destroyed for lack of knowledge, period. You can still be his people and be destroyed. You can still be the people of God and live it in destruction, live it in ruin. Interesting, huh? He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. How do you reject knowledge? When you reject the word of God. When you reject the purpose that God has created you for. Huh? When you reject, listen good because, man, woo. Huh? Now, now, now there's people out there that don't open their Bible. Or they think that they're reading the Bible and they're doing their responsibility and duty by reading the app's daily, daily verse. Huh? Sit down with your wife once a day and give her one verse and see if your marriage is going to last. It's the truth, right? Unless you sit down and communicate and interact with your spouse, it's not going nowhere. And that's how we have to be with the word of God. There's people, unfortunately, that don't read the word, that don't get into the word of God, that don't, and they won't even come to Bible study. Huh? And he says you can still be destroyed for lack of knowledge. This kingdom works off of knowledge, off of light. Go to the next verse, please. In order to get light, in order to get understanding, to get wisdom, to have truth, light is truth, the Bible says you have to buy it. It says buy the truth and do not sell it <laughs> so when you buy something that is of value, you're not going to sell it. You're going to keep it to yourself. Huh? 
So light is the, the power of light is very essential to the fulfillment of our destiny. The Bible says that people of God will be destroyed because the lack of it, because they reject it, because they don't want to hear it, because they don't want to walk in it, because they're taught that by grace you're saved and nothing else matters. Listen, people of God. Be careful what you listen to. Huh? Not everything that shines is gold. Not everything that sounds good <laughs> is good. Huh? He says it's going to cost you something. You're going to have to pay a price for it. And he's not talking about money. Now, he's not talking about finances. Okay, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about humility. He's talking about meekness. That's how you buy the truth. See, the truth is a commodity. The, the light, the light that I'm talking, the power of light is a commodity. And the currencies to buy it is humility, it's meekness. It's meditating in the word of God day and night and making sure. He didn't say, I'll make sure. He says, and you make sure you don't depart from the left or the right of it. People of God. This kingdom works based upon light, knowledge. And not just any kind of knowledge. The apostle Paul, which we all know that he was handpicked by Jesus. Huh? Handpicked by Jesus. Yeah, he, and he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Did you know that? And from prison. Who wants to write when they're in prison? <laughs> huh? Right? I mean, think about it. And he didn't just write a letter. That's easy. Two or three lines. Fool. Send me some money. Huh? Put some money on my books. Huh? No, nah, he didn't do that. He wrote a pistol. Inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. And yet he said, this is a man that was handpicked by Jesus that was caught up and took to the third heaven. He's seen things that, that he, couldn't even, he couldn't even put in words and he wasn't even permitted or allowed to speak on them. Do you know what that is? A man that was stoned to death and dragged out of the city and God brought him back to life. Yet he said, I want to know more of Jesus. He said, I want to know more of him and the power of his resurrection. People of God, this kingdom is the power of light is essential. Without it, without knowledge, without more of him and the power of his resurrection, you ain't going to get to the fulfillment of your destiny. Nobody will. There's a song that, I'm not a singer, but there's a song that says, it says, I want to know more of him, Jesus, more of you. Next verse. Now, this is Paul speaking, uh, Colossians 1.9. I want to show you the importance of the power of light and what it does. Listen to what he says. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be, number one, write it down, that you may be filled with the knowledge. That you may be filled with the power of light is what he's saying. Number two. And knowledge of uh, the, the, the power, uh, the, the point one is the knowledge of his will. That's point one. Point two, in all wisdom. Not in some wisdom, but in all wisdom. And let me tell you what wisdom is. Wisdom isn't that you just get up and have something witty to say or something smart to say or something intelligent to say every time you're in a group or with a bunch of people. Wisdom is also knowing when to shut your mouth. Did you know that? Or not to speak. I'm not, I'm not being rude. I'm telling you the truth. Huh? The Bible says that even the fool who doesn't speak will be, will be deemed to be wise. Like, he ain't saying much. This guy must know a lot, huh? Point three. The, the, the first point is knowledge of his will, in all wisdom, and spiritual understanding. Why? Because this kingdom, the kingdom of God, hallelujah, and your destiny fulfillment depends on the power of light. Go to the next verse, and with this we'll end. This is uh, uh, Acts 
10.32. Listen to what it says. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Let me show you what the word of God is able to do. Number one, build you up. Huh? Don't depend on man to build you up, but the word of God will. Huh? Be dependent upon God. Because there's two sides of it. There's people that go to church every Sunday, and every, and every Wednesday they go to Bible study. You know what I mean? And they think that that will cover it. No. What about the other five days of the week? Huh? When the pastor ain't with you, when the teacher ain't with you, when Minister Randy ain't with you to teach you. Huh? When Reverend Maria Sable ain't there to teach you, when Pastor God ain't there to teach you. Huh? But the Bible, the Word of God will build you up. Number two, and give you, listen, I'm not saying this. The Word of God is saying this. And give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. And, um, listen to what sanctified means. Those that have been set apart. Let me tell you what church means. Those that have been called out. You're in the world, but you've been called out separate from the behavior of the world. Not to be conformed to a world. Not to go after the things of the world. Not to be like the world. To be different. For the, for the Bible says, for those who love the world, the love of the Father ain't in them. So he's saying is that with those, I'm going to give you an inheritance. What he's saying with those, they're living a light set apart. That's what the word of God is able to do, but you got to stay in the word. I don't know, is there another verse? I think there was one more. That's Acts 20, 32, matter of fact. I guess not. <laughs> that was the last verse? Oh, no, no, no. You're going to probably, no, I know what it is that. Uh, go to this last verse. It's Proverbs 23, 23. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't get to that verse, but I wanted to show you that. Proverbs 23, 23. No, we did do Proverbs 23, 23. Yeah, we did. Oh, Proverbs 4, 6, and 7. I'm sorry. Proverbs 4, 6, and 7. That's it. Proverbs 4, 6, and 7. Also deals with the uh, uh, truth. And this last verse, you can, guys can write it down. Proverbs 4, 6, and 7. <clears throat> you could even write that verse down because it also speaks about the truth. It speaks about wisdom and understanding and about with all getting, get that. In other words, whatever you do or whatever it is that you're pursuing in life, don't pursue it before you pursue knowledge, truth, understanding, and wisdom. That's what Proverbs 4, 6, and 7 will teach. Stand with me. <clears throat> 